Are you ready to get on the hot seat with Wally George? Hang on for the wildest, most controversial talk show on television, featuring enthusiastic participation from our live studio audience and interviews with provocative newsmaker guests. And now, here he is, that hard-hitting, award-winning, conservative voice of television, Wally George! Fantastic audience tonight in here! Yeah! Hey, you're one of the best audience we've had in four months in here! Let me make, hey, let me make a rough count here. I would say offhand, 12,000 people here! Like yeah, anyway. terrific. Yeah. Hey, what great enthusiasm. Hey, I'll tell you, the reason we're on the air now, going on our fifth year, is because of our great studio audiences. Right. Okay. Now, I tell you, we have some ludicrous maniacs on the show tonight. About we have a guy who wrote a who wrote a stupid little book, like a stupid little red book. Red, of course, yeah. Red. And and uh, and and the name of the book is Guide to Swifter and Deeper Thoughts. Oh. God. Hey, to tell you, what I jerked this guy is, his name is Jerry Schaefer. He, he's against the CIA and he's in favor of the ACLU. That's not very deep. This guy's a, a real moron. But, and then we have our resident liberal bleeding heart wimp, Jeff. They got it right. Yeah. Our resident wimp, yeah. Jeff Tulcher, he's here to support this stupid Supreme Court decision that calls for hiring women over men, even if the men are better qualified. <laughs> And Jeff Tolcher thinks, Jeff Tolcher thinks that's okay. He obviously is a stupid little spineless wimp mama's boy. Yeah. And then, okay. And then we have some, and then we'll, we'll, we'll have some questions from our great studio audience tonight. But first, but first we're gonna introduce our, our crew and uh, our director tonight, sitting in the booth tonight. Let's hear it for the amazing Kevin Little in the booth tonight. Let's hear it. <laughs> on the floor, he's gone Hollywood on us now. Here, Jaime Gonzalez on the floor. <laughs> The prettiest producer on television, Paige Poliquin. There she is. And of course, and of course, my my good friend, the one and only David Kennedy, right here. How you doing, David? Okay. Good crowd tonight. Yeah, loud and boisterous as usual. Hey, do you realize? That in just about two and a half months, David, we're going to be starting our fifth, fifth year. year on oh, television. Yeah. All right. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Absolutely right. Okay. 
Now it's time to do our, hold it everybody, shh, slow it down. It's, it's time for my commentary of the night, and then we'll get on to our questions from the audience. You know, I'm a, I'm a little sick and tired of this Jessica Hahn. She's the, she's the girl who was allegedly forced to have sex with evangelist Jim Baker. Now, I say that that Jessica is really enjoying all of this publicity. I think she maybe thinks it's going to make her a star. Now, Jessica claims, Jessica Hahn claims she was an innocent little virgin when all this happened. And yet, and yet she parades in front of television and newspaper cameras in her skin-tight jeans with a sexy smile on her face, she doesn't hesitate to talk about her so-called ordeal with evangelist Jim Baker. Now, in Newsweek magazine, she says Jim Baker forced her to have sex while she was woozy from one glass of wine. Oh, come on. <laughs> Hey, that sounds like a cop-out to me. What do you think? She was woozy on one glass of wine and didn't know what she was doing. Now, now Jessica, Jessica says that her session with Jim Baker lasted for about an hour and a half. Now, obviously... Obviously, she wasn't too woozy to keep track of how long it was going on. And then, and then after that, after that, she says, after Baker was through with her, she says Baker forced her to have sex with another minister. Oh. She couldn't have been that woozy, huh? Oh. Now, Jim Baker, hold it. Jim Baker says he was set up and blackmailed, but Jessica says there was no blackmail. However, she admits to agreeing to a $265,000 settlement. Now, <laughs> Hey, that sounds, that sounds like blackmail to me. What about you? <laughs> now, this whole incident happened seven years ago. Now, if Jessica Hahn was indeed a virgin and all that with, after the sexual encounter, why did she wait for seven years to complain? Why didn't this poor little innocent girl go to the police immediately after the incident? This whole, this whole thing smells, smells to high heaven, if you'll pardon the expression. And I think Jennifer is not anywhere near as innocent as she claims to be. I'll be right back. Welcome back. Wally George here on Hot Seat. This is the Hot Show on Saturday night. Make myself some notes here, David. Okay. Don't forget, every Saturday night, 11 until 12 midnight. David, do you have anything to say on my commentary? Oh, yeah. You know, the next thing I expect to hear from this is that uh, she's writing a book about this experience. Probably call it My Night Under the Cloth or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Something like that. Jessica is not, is not going to do too bad. not going to do that. They'll do a movie on her life. Yeah. And then Playboy will do a center fold on Jessica. Yeah, come on. Okay. Now it's time for the mailbag. Here we go. Okay, here's a letter from a here's here's a note from a girl named Lucy. She says, 
Wally, I hear you're going to run for mayor of Los Angeles. Well, you need to know something. I'm going to vote for Tom Bradley because he's cuter than you are. Not only that, he doesn't have a wig. Obviously, this girl needs glasses. Hey, Bradley isn't cuter than anybody. Maybe Lucy is 75 years old. Boy, okay. Now, here's, here's one from a brilliant, obviously brilliant girl uh, named Dolly. Uh-huh. And she, hey. I like it so far. She says, Dear Wally. And she spells it W-H-A-L-L-Y. Wally. She says, Dear Wally, I, I wonder if you can give me Hold it. Says, I wonder if you could give me a little advice. You see, Wally, Wally, uh, I like this guy a lot, and he likes me a lot. But we, but we never talk. What should I do? Talk. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> hey, I'm wondering, if they're, not, if they're not talking, what are they doing? <laughs> Hey, whatever you're, you're doing with this guy, stop it and start talking, okay? I'll tell you, David. Either that or buy a cradle. Now, here's a good one from Scott, and he says, I, I watch you... I watch you on TV every day with my friends. My three favorite political people are Richard, Nixon, George, Will, and Wally. Okay. All right. All right, let, let's go to the studio audience now and bring up some people. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. All right, my name's Greg Beckman. I'm from your Belinda. Yeah, Greg. And I would like to know if we should bring uh, back the witch hunts in the McCarthy era due to all these uh, American traitors spying for the Soviet Union. Well, you know, I don't consider all that stuff back in the McCarthy area a witch hunt. I think, you know, the, the liberals really have beat Joe McCarthy to death. And I say maybe he went a little bit too far uh, by being too exuberant. But if we had listened to Joe McCarthy back in the 50s when he complained of a communist infiltration of traitors in our government, government, in our armed forces, yeah, and so forth. If we had listened to him then, maybe we wouldn't have the problem we have now. I say yes. Let's start looking into the government and to the uh, churches and the schools. Yeah. Hey, 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 let's find out who the traitors are in this country, line them up against the wall, and shoot them. Joe McCarthy. Oh, Wally George is what we need. Why well, worse than McCarthy? <laughs> yeah. Hold it down. Yes, go ahead. I'm Heather from Claremont, and me. Heather, my, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? My friend Jeff and me and Greg would like to know what do you think about this guy named Kemp who yeah. thinks he's going to run for president? Jack Kemp. Yes. Jack Kemp. Uh, yes, he just just announced recently that he's planning to run for president. I'll tell you. Jack Kemp should run for vice president, and for president, Not we should president at all. <laughs> for president, let, let, let's have Wally. Jack Kemp for vice president. Right. Go ahead. My name is Mike Montreal, and yeah, I would Mike. like to know what you think about Al Campanis and what he said about the black people in management positions. Well, I think Al Campanis stepped way out of, out of line by saying what he did. But I will congratulate him for one thing he did on the, on the Nightline show with Ted Koppel. When Ted Koppel kept pouring it on to Campanis and saying, why don't we have more blacks in management positions as managers of baseball teams and, and, and so forth, Campanis turned it right back on Ted Koppel and said, why don't you guys have more black news anchors and blacks in major positions on ABC television? And I think... Hey, Ted Koppel is a bit of a hypocrite straightening out the Dodgers. He better straighten out his own network. 
Yes, go ahead. Sir from on. How do you think about uh, AIDS and how they're telling us that uh, casual contact, you can't pick up AIDS, yet 6% of all reported AIDS, they don't know where they come from. I think we should take a second look at AIDS and how, how you can pick it up. Absolutely, because you know what? The American Medical Association is still... Uh, the, the American Me Medical Association is still, to this day... Pull it down, the audience, please. Uh, the American Medical Association to this day has not stated that you cannot catch AIDS by casual contact. As a matter of fact, some doctors have said you definitely can catch it by heavy kissing. Now, because it's saliva. Now, if you can catch it from kissing, how about out of drinking out, out of the same glass? I say we have not proved yet that you cannot catch this fatal disease by casual contact. And I say, until we do prove it, all AIDS victims must be isolated from society. Yeah! Hi, I'm Brian. Yes, Brian. Hold it. Yes. Hi, well, I'm Brian from Los Angeles, and I heard you say, I heard you say that you were running for mayor. I, I may run for mayor. Oh, you may run for mayor, because well, I was wait, wondering. Wait a minute. Why in the world do you have a t-shirt that says, wait a minute. What, suicidal tendencies? Wait a minute, it says. Why do you, why do you have a shirt that says suicidal tendency? Well, I got it for free. Suicidal tendencies? Excuse me? Do you have suicidal tendencies? No, I don't have any suicidal well, then why tendencies. Why do you wear that stupid? Get out of here. I'll be right back. Okay, thank you very much. Welcome back to Hot Seat, everybody. I want to remind you people watching us here in the Southern California area to be sure to join me every day on Channel 56, Monday through Friday, 4.30 to 5, we do the Hot Seat Hotline. You can call me on the phone for half an hour and talk to me on television. Monday through Friday, 4.30 to 5, the Hot Seat Hotline. Join me here, okay? Now, Dave, it's time for our first guest on the Hot Seat. First up tonight, Wally, we have Jerry Schaefer, who has written a book called A Guide to Swifter and Deeper Thoughts oh. that appears to be it appears to be against just about everything. Yeah. Jerry Schaefer. All right, Jerry Schaefer. Hold it. Hold it. Now, now Jerry Schaefer, you're the, this is your is your first appearance on my show, Jerry, right? That's right. And it'll probably be your last. Yeah, thank God. You learn to read, Wally. I don't think it will be. I, I have read your stupid your stupid little book here. It's not stupid. And it's called the, the Guide to Swifter and Deeper Thoughts. Hey, take a look at him. He doesn't look very swift or deep to me. I think it's a little too swift for you, Wally. Hey, Jerry. Yeah, yeah. This is a, hey, this is a beautifully, uh, a beautifully uh, done book. Where did you print this? In your garage somewhere? Real funny, Wally. Real funny, Wally. Uh, have you tried to read it? Do you know how to read? Do you want me hey. to read you something from it? No, thank you. No, I read it uh, about... A, how about Rocky Rambo? You're, you're a big Rambo fan, I think, no, right? No, 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 no. no. Let, let me ask you. You are against almost everything that is good and decent in America in this stupid book. Now, you even take a... Guess what? He even takes on patriotism. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> no, wait a minute. No, in your book, you... At, oh, you attack patriotism. Why are you are you against patriotism? I'm not against patriotism, Wally. I'm for patriotism. But what? I'm, I'm saying. I'm but. saying. Don't love dirt. Don't love dirt. Yeah, that's don't love dirt. And uh, well, if you don't love, hey, patriotism is dirt. Is that it? No. Hey, if you don't love dirt, you wouldn't have printed this dirty book. Yeah. Now no, what I is? What do you mean? Dirt, 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 dirt. What do you, 
What do you mean by don't love dirt? Now, now what does right, that mean? Right. Can, I, can I explain it to you? you Try to right. if you can, yeah. What does that mean? This is, let me give it to you here. Uh, patriotism, the belief that your land and the dirt thereof is your father, called Father Land, and that you should therefore feel privileged to die for it. Patriotism in, is instilled from a young age to still any doubts in the logic of loving dirt. See it as muddy thinking. Now, I'm for patriotism. I love my country, but we go too far. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. What do you mean you can, you can never, he says you go too far, you can never go too far in patriotism, can you? All right, uh, hey, hey, Mr. Whistler. USA, 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 USA. All right, Mr. George Wally. How about the you? Germans? What about the Japanese in uh, World War II? Did they love their country too much? No, wait. Are you, are you comparing us to Nazi Germany? Yeah, are you? I'm just stuck. There is nothing wrong with being an ardent patriot. I, are you against my notion that, the, that we should always have the United States number one over everybody? Are you against that? I am. We got a question. We got a question. You just got a for, question. Well, just for example, we shouldn't be in Nicaragua. We shouldn't be supporting the Contras. We have oh. to question. We have to question our position once in a while. You don't unthink it. Wait a minute. I've got to question your sanity. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. Uh, uh, Mr. Mr. What do you mean? What do you mean we should wait, what do you mean we, we, we should not be in Nicaragua helping the Contras? They are the freedom fighters. Ronald Reagan, the best president we've ever had. Best president? What, what's his name? Ronald Reagan. The best president in the history of this country. You, you don't believe that? Well, uh, I can't quite I can't I can't quite remember uh, I'm having a memory lapse here. Uh. Yeah, yeah. You want to? I can see why he why he attacks being too patriotic because I understand you also support the American Civil Liberties Union, the ACLU. Is that right? That's right. I do. I do. <laughs> and they support your right. They support your right to be here. They support the right of these whatever they are to be sitting out there. They're behind us. Why do you support the ACLU? Because they're the most patriotic Americans that we have. Oh, they're, they, wait. I hold it. They support the Constitution. Hold it. Shh. You just, wait a minute, the hold it down. Of the Constitution. You just buried yourself, pal. You told me the ACLU was the most patriotic organization. That's Let me right. tell you, right on that chair where you're sitting, I had Carol Sobel, the director of the ACLU, and she refused to pledge her allegiance to the United States of America. How do you answer that? All right, all right, all right, Mr. All right, all right. All right. No, don't all right, read. All right, Mr. Walton, no, I no, have some. No, just answer all me right. that. All right, she ref hey, wait a minute. She refused to recite. Shh. Hold it. She refused to recite. She refused to recite the pledge of allegiance to the flag. Would you recite the pledge of allegiance to the flag with me right now? Well, I just do not. I'm not. I'm not against it. I'm a. I do, do it you, at school, but I just well, do not she, do it on your program. Well, you supported no. the you support the ACLU. Yeah. Carol Sobel, the director, refused to recite the Pledge of Allegiance, and then she refused to say that she would pledge her allegiance to this country. Do you pledge your allegiance to the United States of America unconditionally? Unconditionally, no. Oh. <laughs> Now we know where this mania is coming from. I'll be right back.
Welcome back. Wally George here with Hot Seat. And my guest is author Jerry Schaefer, who, who, who has a book called The Guide to Swifter and Deeper Thoughts. Now, when we left you, Jerry, you, you had the audacity to say that you would not unconditionally pledge your allegiance to this country. Why not? Well, are you telling me you would, Wally? I uh, Wouldn't you? Yeah! Every, every decent American would do so. I mean, how can you pledge your allegiance unconditionally when this country pulls off some of the crazy schemes that just came out in Iran, Iran scam, uh, things under the table? Iran how can you support some blown, of these people? Iran scam was blown out of proportion by a bunch of nitwits like you in the news media. No, and no, the no, 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 that's not true. What's wrong with Iran scam? I think it was a great idea. No. I support it un un unequivocally. Even if everything that they accused the president of doing in Iran was right, I say it was okay anyway. Fine. Yeah. Wow. What a great idea. Uh, it's people like you that are running down this country and oh and yeah, take people us like to the me. Grave. He's the guy who won't pledge his allegiance to this country. <laughs> now, what, now you are. You're sharing. Hold on. You're sharing, Jerry. Shh. You're saying uh, that we should abolish all nuclear weapons. Is, is that what, what you're saying? That's right. Star Wars is nuts. That's right. Do all you, nuclear weapons. Do you, uh, do you think that if we abolished all of our nuclear weapons that we could trust the Russians to do likewise? Well, we would have to ensure that they do, but I think we could set up uh, committees to do that. I think uh, that... You are against... You are against, shh, hold it. You are against the Strategic Defense Initiative, SDI, which is Star Wars. And don't you know, you obviously don't know anything, but right now, the Soviet Union is very close to perfecting its own Star Wars system. And you should know that if they get their Star Wars in place before we do, we will be at their mercy. <laughs> That's crazy. That's a pack of lies. It's I don't... not a pack of lies. Do you know? Do you know what what Star Wars is? It, it's a nuclear shield to do. It can't work. It can't work. It's crazy. Who said it, it couldn't hey, work? It, it is... Here's a, here's a typical liberal bleeding heart. He says, he says, it can't work, it can't work, it's crazy. Hey, they say that, they said that when they invented the airplane. It can't work, it can't work, it's crazy. I say, it can work, it can work, and you're crazy. <laughs> now, you know what? Would you be for it if it would work? You thought no, it would no, work? It's a waste no, you still of money. would be against it then. It's that is the reason. Even if it would work, you, you wouldn't be in favor of it. No, it's just, it's just a continued escalation of the arms. So you would like us to be completely bare and, and vulnerable to an attack by the Soviet Union? We well, uh, And if nuclear weapons were phased out, well, then we wouldn't have to worry about it. That's what I'm for. Now, you are also against the, uh, you're against the CIA, right? Yeah. yeah Why? They mess. They, they go they go way too far they they uh, undermine the credibility of the of the government of the people they lie I say that I say the CIA hasn't gone far enough we haven't given them a, enough strength if we had given them enough strength we wouldn't have had the problem that we're having right now in our American embassy in the uh, Soviet Union Mr. George Wallace, I mean, George Wally, I think you've gone too far. I think you're crazy on that one. Swifter. I need some 
the guide to swifter and deeper thoughts. Sure. I'll tell you what I think about this. There you go. I'll be right back. much. Hey, I want to remind you that, hold everybody, on, on May 1st, Rick Dees, that little rodent, he's going to be putting on a show, a very filthy, degenerate show at the Universal Amphitheater, and I have threatened Rick that I'm going to crash that show at the Universal Amphitheater and shut him down. Now, he... No. Now, he said on, on his stupid little uh, raunchy radio program the other morning that he was going to block all the entrances and he would not let me uh, get into the Universal Amphitheater on May 1st. I have news for you, raunchy rodent pervert D's. You can't stop me. Nobody can stop Super Wally. That's right. In other words, you think you might make it. I'm going to be there. Okay. Okay, now we want, to, we want to advise you that we love to hear from you. Write to me. I read every letter I get, and I answer every one personally. I really do. Write to me, and uh, if you want uh, an autographed picture or a, or a bumper sticker, we'll send it out to you. Just write to us. Our address is on the screen. And also, if you want to come down here maybe perhaps and debate me on the hot seat on a certain subject, let me know. Maybe I'll invite you to come down here and sit on the hot seat sometime. My address is just Wally George Hot Seat, P.O. Box 56 TV, Anaheim, California, 92803. That's Wally George Hot Seat, P.O. Box 56 TV, Anaheim, California, 92803. Now, if you want to come down and attend one of our tapings, we're here every... We're here every Wednesday night. We, we tape our hot seat show about 6.30. Call the numbers on your screen any day, Monday through Friday, from 8.30 until 6. Leave your name and your telephone number, how many tickets you want, and we'll invite you to come down as soon as we can to be a member of our studio audience, okay? Now, in the 213 area, call, call 464-6111. In, in the 714 area code, are you ready? 714 area code is 999. 999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-999-
who is going after a job and a man's going after the same job. The man has worked longer and is up for the job. He's better qualified for the job, but they hire a woman just That's because right. she's a woman. Is that fair? Yes. You know why that is, Wally? I'll tell you why that is. A lot, these, what, what companies are doing now, Wally, is they're, they're instituting a program called affirmative action, voluntary or mandatory. Voluntary affirmative action is a company volu voluntarily making sure that women and there are equal amounts of women and men in, in their workforce. That's the quota system. That's right. Then what's wrong with that? System. Why, what's no. wrong with that? I'll tell you what's wrong with it because I, I don't care if you're black or yellow Yeah, because or green. you got it so good you're not worried about it. If you were a woman, Wally, which you probably are, oh. you wouldn't have to worry about it. If you put yourself in a woman's place, Wally. Put yourself. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Hey, Wally. Wait a minute. He's telling me. Wait. 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 He's yeah, telling me. Yeah, fix your skirt, Wally. Wait. Wait. Shh. He's telling me to to put myself in the woman's place. He already is. Obviously, for his entire lifetime, he's put himself in the woman's place. Oh boy. So you're. So you're in the, obviously. Jeff, you're in favor of lowering the level of competence of society. No, you think, that's but, what you're you doing. think by hiring women you're lowering yes, yes, them? You're oh, did you hear that? Yeah. Ladies at home, listen, David you is just saying said. by hiring women, Shut you're lowering their competency. You just that said is bull the, only, David. If the man was better qualified and the woman was less qualified, got, she should get the job. What about that's lowering oh, the level? Oh, you're psychotic. <laughs> I have to listen. Jeff. Do you want an equal and fair society, David? Shouldn't this society be based on equal, equal, equal uh, occupation for both men and women? Equal opportunities. A man better is better qualified. He should have yeah, a job. Uh, but hold on. Know, was based at Jeff, Supreme wait a minute. This is the whole thing. How can the woman have any pride herself if she knows the only way she got that job is not because she was the best qualified, but only because she happened to be a woman? That's she can't even ha hold her head up. And think of the think of the hostility that, that's going to be in the job place, how about if you worked at your place of business and you know that a woman got a top job, not because she should have gotten it, but only because she happened to be a woman. That's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, well, for many years, Wally, hey, Wally, for many years, I, wait, for many years, Wally, I don't, it's been switched. It's been the other way around. No, for many it hasn't. years, there have been women who are more qualified than men, for men, the men that get jobs, and men have gotten it because because they're men. Now it's about time that women had a chance to work in, in, in the world. Yes, it's about chance they get an equal chance, but only if they are better qualified than anybody else you know, for that job. Do you know another reason that, that this decision was made? They did a, a Gallup poll did a study that found that only 35% of all the women in America feel they can even get a job that's comparable to men, Wally. 35%. That means that the other 65% don't even want to work or don't even want to try to get a job. That's discouraging them. Right. Hey, listen, hey. You people don't even have any jobs, so be quiet. Jeff, get back to the welfare line. Hey, Jeff. Go back to the welfare line. Hold it. Jeff, let me, let me tell you this. What this whole thing is, it's discrimination in reverse. It, the feminists now have, are now discriminating against us men. And I'll tell you, we're not going to stand for it. Well, you, hey, Wally, though, what about... Wally, what about the last 20 years when the woman was discriminated against? They no woman yet. has run for president because no, they don't feel that they would get voted for. They're That's right. the problem. They're right. They didn't. See, you guys are both male chauvinist pigs. You know oh. that? Especially you, David. No, no, we're not. Yes, you are. You, how, can, how can you guys we even... Hope. We are... Wait. I stand for, and David, we stand for equality. No, you don't. You stand for male pigness is what you stand for. Oh. What I'm saying, saying, Jeff, is I don't care what color a person may be, whether it's male or female. I say it again and again, and I'll say it for the final time tonight. The only fair way on the job market today 
is to give the best qualified the job. If a woman gets a job over a man and he knows he's better qualified, what kind of incentive is that for him to go out and do the best job he can? What about the woman? What about for, for years, Wally, women wouldn't even try to go for high executive jobs because the only way they'd get them is if they had a big bust and a big butt. That's the only way. Welcome back. We'll go to our final guest on the hot seat in just a moment. Right now, I want to remind you here in Southern California to join me every Monday night on KLAC Radio, 57 on the AM dial. It's the number one country music station in America, but on Monday nights, we talk for three hours on the Wally George Great American Radio Show. You can talk to me on the air. Call me on the phone. We have uh, ludicrous guests on the air. You can talk to them, too. Monday nights on KLAC, 7 until 10 p.m., 57 on the AM dial. Now, David, if you will, our last Okay, guest. last up tonight we have Tracy Joyner, who is here to discuss the moral issues involved in the surrogate motherhood question. All right, let's have a little hand for Tracy. There she is. Get you off to a good start anyway. Now, that may be the last hand you're going to get tonight, because, Tracy, I am totally against surrogate motherhood. Number one, I think it causes nothing but problems from the day one. Mm -hmm. First of all, you know, what's happening is you're hiring a woman, you're signing a contract for this woman to have your baby for you, and you, what you're doing really is renting her body for nine months, renting her womb. I say it's morally wrong and causes all kinds of terrible problems. <coughs> Why do you defend surrogate motherhood? First of all, Wally, I think that it's a woman's prerogative to do what she wants with her body, freedom to do what she wants. Well. Right. And secondly, Wally, if you, if you look on the other issue, look at all that the woman's going through. I mean, she's carrying this baby, and unselfishly, she's giving it to somebody who can't have a baby. So if you look at on from that prospect, you can see where I'm coming from. Yeah, but I'll tell you where I'm coming from. When, when this mother has the baby, as, it, as you've seen in this whole problem with the Baby M case... Well, that's one isolated but, incident. No, it isn't one. It happens all the time. Well, so does a lot of so things. So with but the Baby M case, what happened? The real mother, who was supposed to be the surrogate mother, mm -hmm. she has the baby and doesn't want to give it to the parents, well, even it, though she signed the contract. All right, that could have been nullified from the beginning because at first they said that you have to go through psychological process, and she never passed it. And they went, they went ahead and let her go, you know, go through with it. But so and what I'm saying, the, the way it's set up, Wally, if you're if you're psychologically in tune to go through with this, then you, you're more amped to give up the baby. But the surrogate mother is the real mother. And if she wants Wally, to have it, but Wally, why can't she but have Wally, it? we're all God's children. We're God, who, ha who has the baby, we're all God's children. But the children. problem, you don't Wally. understand, what I'm trying to tell you, Tracy, is the problem is the surrogate mother draws up a contract w with a, a couple who can't have their own child, the right? The problem is there's selfish people in America, and you're one of them. I mean, oh. if, you, if you just think about it, this, this is an unselfish unselfish mother who's willing to give up her baby. I mean, that's the issue right there. I think that people are too hard on the mother. I mean, that's you know how much it is to give up your child? Yeah. I mean, but you're not just saying, you're not you're giving up a life and, and for for someone else who who is unable to um to have a baby. That's but the surrogate mother is always going to Don't you understand her motherly instinct? What about adoption? Let me talk a minute, Tracy. Okay, go ahead. It's, uh, the, the surrogate mother has 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 maternal instincts. Well, now she may have. All what if the baby were to die? I'm not Wally? finished I mean, yet. Regardless. Let, let me finish. Let me finish. The surrogate mother has maternal instincts. Mm -hmm. She may have all the good intentions in the world when she signs the contract to give birth to the baby and then give it to the other parents. Do you think? But, that, do you think but, the father? But wait, Tracy. Once she has that baby and she says, "Wait a minute, this is my child. It's, it's my the father's flesh and blood. child too. It's, the, it's just as much the father's child as, as yeah, it is the mother." Yeah, but why should the natural mother be able to keep it? If because she, wants she gave to? it up. Because because she gave it up. That was the process when she signed the all paper. Right. That's a contract. Right, what, what, wait. That's a contract. 
Hey, you contract. can't have a baby on a contract. That's yeah, immoral. Yeah, it is. Yes, so, David. So a contract should take precedence over the natural instincts of motherhood. Yeah. Oh, she no. knew what she was in for before she went through with it. It isn't like somebody just up and took this baby away from her. She I understood know. all this. She Not if she's all never all had a baby before. She, she had three didn't. of them, and she can't even take care yeah, of those. Yeah, but what if she hadn't? The whole idea is, Tracy, that she may have all the good intentions in the world when she signs that contract, but once she has the mother, she says, it's my baby, I want it, and I say, if the real mother wants it, she should be able to have it. Well, I said she signed over the baby. She has to be the baby. She, if she, if she, had, if she had the choice from the beginning, and she made that choice when she signed over the paper. What's that? I said she had that choice from the beginning, and she lost that when she signed it away. Those contracts aren't worth a well, darn. Contracts are it's made. It's obviously worth something because she doesn't have the baby. Contr why, why, uh, why can't these people, why can't these people who want these babies so bad, there are millions of them around that, that with no mother and father, why can't they adopt one? Yeah, why about, how about on. adoption? Going through all this malarkey. Huh. One thing that you guys fail to understand is it is half the father's baby. It is half of the father's baby. It is like not just just adopting a baby that isn't yours. But the, the father is the father's baby also. Yeah, yeah, but, but, but I'll tell you what, the problems that ensue, all right, not only do you always have the problem of, of the surrogate mother wanting her own baby, and I say she should rightfully have it, but, but as the child grows up, sooner or later, she's You have those same problems with adoption, Wally, and well, people have been adopted for years. I'm trying to tell you this. As the child grows up, she's going to want to know her real mother. She's going to be happy that she was raised in, a, in, a, in an environment where she can appreciate it. You understand what I'm saying? A lot of mothers, a lot of surrogate mothers, the reason why they, they give up their kids is because they're not. They're unable. They're unable to um, to give them the upbringing that they want. They don't have the money. Well, I'll tell you this. I say that surrogate motherhood is wrong from from the very beginning. And I disagree. I disagree. I say this, and as, as David said so well, to oh, to stop this kind of problem. What we have to do is, is make surrogate motherhood illegal in the United States of America. Well, if you do that, well, what, what do you, if you feel that way, how do you feel about adoption? What? If you feel that way, how do you feel about adoption? I'm in favor of adoption, but that's more normal. How could you tell somebody what they can do with their body? How could you make that illegal? You, you, can't, tell, you can't tell someone what they can do with their body. For the same reason that I'm against abortion, for the same reason I'm against prostitution, I say that you can't... You, well, you, you're looking at everything as black and white. There is a gray area. You there is no gray there area. There is a gray area. There's no gray area. And if I become president of the United States, I'll make sure there is no more surrogate